watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And thanks for joining us on this Monday for DC News Now at 4. I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Tosin Fakile. We're tracking a busy end to the weekend for DC police after at least 10 people were hurt in shootings yesterday through early this morning. Overall, violent crime is down 27% in the district and city leaders are looking to keep that trend heading into the busy summer season. That's right, and DC News Now's Randy Bass joins us now live near police headquarters with details on what that looks like in action. Randy. Yeah, Mark Tosin, even though those violent crime numbers are down overall, it certainly doesn't feel that way for some. At least one teenage girl was among those injured in those shootings over the weekend, and city leaders have a big focus heading into the summertime when it comes to keeping kids, teens, and young adults safe. Police Chief Pamela Smith says one thing that isn't going anywhere this summer is the city's curfew. She says, if anything, enforcement is actually ramping up heading into summertime. Today, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser and Police Chief Smith both highlighting other programs to to keep DC's youngest residents safe, summer camps, pools, free meals, early employment programs, and events targeted toward youth. Take a listen to Police Chief Smith's big message to families this summer. Please know where your children are. Please be engaged in their day-to-day -day activities because we truly believe that with your involvement and your support, our young people, as well as our adults, will have a safe summer this year. And as school is set to let out next week, parents are encouraged to keep an eye on the city's curfew. That runs from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. during the week, so that's Sunday through Thursday, and on Saturday and Sunday from midnight to 6 a.m. Live in Northwest, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now. Randy, thank you. A live look at the Kennedy Center in Tosin. Not a bad start to the week. I agree. Not bad. It's not too hot. It felt kind of great, but how long will this stick around? Let's head on over to meteorologist Damon Madsen. And Damon, honestly, the weekend perfection. Today, not so bad. Hey, we love to hear that, especially on a weekend and going into this new week here. Anything on the quiet, comfortable side, we will always take. Now, it has been a spectacular Monday overall. We've had one change, though since earlier in the day. A disturbance has dropped down from the north and brought about a lot of cloud cover. Low clouds at that. The sunshine definitely not as prevalent from the Chesapeake Bay all the way back into the mountains of western Maryland. Very few peaks of sunshine at this point. But despite the fact that we are seeing a lot of cloud cover, that's pretty much all we are seeing. There are a couple of spotty showers trying to pop up back off to the south and west, but there have Having a really tough time because we have such dry, comfortable air in place over the DMV. So as we move forward, the clouds, they are certainly going to be with us. There could be some breaks of sunshine here and there. But aside from that, we'll just watch out for, for the development of any spotty showers. The chance will remain for that little bit of precipitation up until about sunset. Other than that, we will have dry conditions as we head into the night tonight. And yeah, look at these temperatures. Not bad at all by mid June standards at this point. 70s with no humidity is always nice. Now the question is, yes, like Tosin was asking, how long do we get to hold on to this very comfortable weather? We'll have a full look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. We continue our coverage this afternoon after seven tornadoes confirmed by Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb hit the DMV. And today, the Perez family whose home was damaged by one of those tornadoes is speaking out. Montgomery County reporter Christian Pena covers that area for us. He has the report. The Perez family always dreamed of owning a home. They call it their American dream, but that dream nearly crumbled. Eso me duele mucho. That hurts a lot, Martin says. It hurts me a lot. We know that materialistic things can be replaced, but not the memories. The most important thing is that my family is okay and we will overcome this. Martin Perez recounts the moments him and his family were trapped inside their Gaithersburg home on June 5th. A tornado with winds up to 105 miles ripped through their neighborhood. They were, I don't know, five minutes, six minutes, or even seven minutes that I was trapped. Elizabeth says, I don't know, but to me it felt eternal. All five family members were sent to the hospital after being rescued by Montgomery County Fire and DMS. Elizabeth was critically injured. Within seconds, everything came crashing down. She was saying goodbye, and 
it was it was horrible. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. The Perez family still picking up the pieces days later. Elizabeth was released two days after being hospitalized. They now look to what's next. Fue algo muy fuerte, muy traumante, verdad. Now the Perez family is safe, but it'll take several months until their home is fully reconstructed. For now, we're putting in Galesburg, Maryland. I'm Christian Pena, DC News Now. Christian, thank you. An update this afternoon. Court documents reveal how parole agent David, Mar David Martinez was found on May 31st. Documents say police found Martinez under the bed in the home of the person who is accused of killing him, Emmanuel Sewell, a registered sex offender. Police say Martinez went to Sewell's home to check on him, but Martinez never reported back to work. Sewell appeared in Montgomery County Court earlier today. And an update this afternoon, a 14-year-old girl has died after she was shot nearly two weeks ago. Prince George's County Police identified her as Kam Kamia Farrell. Two other people, a man and a woman, were also injured in that shooting. Their injuries are not considered life-threatening. That is according to police, and they say Farrell and the woman were shot inside an apartment on Atwood Street on May 31st. Farrell died on June 5th. There's a $25,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. An update this afternoon, environmental groups are reacting after Governor Glenn Youngkin announced Virginia is exiting a mandate requiring all new vehicles sold in Virginia to be electric by 2035. And during this decision, the governor said that he pulled Virginia out of the mandate because it could impose unnecessary cost on Virginians and because it takes away consumers' personal freedom to buy the car they really want to purchase. However, some environmental groups say the governor's decision is short-sighted and doesn't take into account the real harms caused by climate change, including harming people's health. American Lung Association says Virginians could avoid nearly 30 billion in healthcare costs and 2,700 premature deaths from tailpipe pollution if we have advanced clean car standards. Now it's likely that the governor's decision to pull Virginia out of the mandate will be met with legal challenges. Democrats say because the General Assembly approved the Virginia's participation in the mandate, the governor can't pull Virginia out without General Assembly approval. And new at four, D.C. Fire Chief John Donnelly shared ways for families to stay safe this summer. Donnelly talked about water, grilling, and firework safety. He says people will see a bigger D.C. fire presence on the water. He reminded people to wear life jackets on a boat, don't drink and operate a boat, and remember safety rules. You're on the water. It's important that you stay hydrated. Um, always wear your personal flotation devices or your life jackets. Even if you're a good swimmer, when you get in the water, it's a lot farther to the shore than you think it is. And he also says, do not leave kids unattended near the water. And if you see someone in the water, call 911. Community leaders hosted pride celebration events in Prince George's County. This year's theme, Embrace Diversity. The event highlights inclusivity and raising awareness on LGBTQIA issues, including resources in healthcare access and mental health services. The county hopes that the LGBTQIA community feels seen, valued, and heard. Pride events are happening all month long. Well, it's been an annual Prince George's County tradition for more than 180 years, but folks will have to look for something else to do this fall as the Prince George's County Fair has been canceled. DC News Now's Dave Hall tells us what prompted the decision. The Prince George's County Fair typically draws large crowds to the Showplace Arena every September, but not this year as organizers canceled the fair due to a lack of volunteers. Wow. I didn't know that. Michael Kelly is not happy he won't be able to go to this year's Prince George's County Fair. It's just fun. It's, just, it gets a, it's a fun thing to do. Organizers said on their Facebook page they had no choice but to pull the plug this year due to a lack of volunteers. Quote, this decision has been made in the interest of ensuring a successful event in 2025 by allowing us the necessary time to rebuild our volunteer base. Oh, that's a shame. Maddie Rogers is another longtime fair goer upset by this year's cancellation. It's not a lot of, you know, outdoor activities that we have um, out in Prince George's County, so that was one of the major ones. So hopefully they'll recon The fair started in 1842 and had been scheduled to run this year from September 5th through the 8th. And it's been going on a bit for quite a while, right? I mean, this, this is a, a tradition. But Michael Kelly and others will have to wait until next year before they can go to the Prince George's County Fair again. 
A lack of volunteers also forced the cancellation of this year's Big Glen Burnie Carnival in Anne Arundel County. In Upper Marlboro, Maryland, Dave Laval, DC News Now. All right, Dave, thank you. Over the weekend in West Virginia, two people in Martinsburg were crowned winners in the annual All-American Soapbox Derby. And officials say that the idea behind the Soapbox Derby is a way for contestants to apply their classroom STEM skills in science, technology, engineering, and math. The two winners are ninth grader Phelan Rodriguez for the boys' division and fifth grader Kaylin Chrisman from the girls' side. At first I was very scared, but then after I went the first time, I got actually very excited. And there's having like going down the big hill to race, and I'm very excited about that. It's really fun, and it's fun seeing friends. I love it, and I love what they do for the everyone out here and for this race. It's awesome. Well, these two will head to the World Championships next month at Derby Downs in Akron, Ohio.